just got whippersnippering and holy jeez, or weed whacking or whatever you guys got. Oh, cut the stone and it's about an inch long that slice, so I might have to steady strip that up. Ouch. Yeah, it took me all the time to clean it. It takes about 10 minutes to fill it up at about 10 hours of bloody preparation. It's uh, beginning of February 2019, so I'm starting to think through the year and it's gonna be a bit of a problematic year because I'm away quite a lot of it with work. Um, I'm trying to work out how I'm gonna fit things in. So I'm gonna go down under the deck there and start to, I've gotta dig out a big tree root before I can flip this thing over because it's gonna stick right through the deck, through the uh, top of my saloon. So I've gotta dig that out and because the mold's sitting where it is, I can't even get an excavator in to do it. So it's gonna to have to be by hand and uh, matic and a chainsaw, I think. Or, but uh, I'm gonna go in and give it a hack and it's been sort of into the 40 degrees every day. So it's not the sort of weather you want me <laughs> inside a hot red mold. Um, hacking away at a bloody tree root. So it's about 22 degrees. I'm gonna go down and give it a bit of a go. I'm sure it's still gonna be hard work, but I'm gonna to start to dig around it to try to get to the base of it and, uh, and then be able to flip my mold over. Right, so I got down to the uh, to the mold in my shorts and started whippersnippering and I thought I'll clean up around the outside of the deck mold first. And uh, yeah, copped a bit of an injury, went and put some pants on and uh, came back down and uh, yeah, by the time I was done, man, it was, it was close to 40 degrees, uh, absolute foul day. And uh, then came time to getting inside the mould and, and giving it a bit of a, a clean up inside the actual deck mould uh, and getting and turning my attention back to that uh, stinking root that I'd left there when I'd cleared the block some two years earlier. Um, part of building something in an industrial area like this is keeping it tidy and obviously I, uh, I like to keep it tidy for all the other guys that I'm living with in this, uh, in this factory unit. Just got whippersnippering and holy jeez, or weed whacking or whatever you guys got. Oh, cut stone and it's about an inch long that slice, so I might have to steady strip that up. Ouch. All right, here we go. This uh, mould has had a bit of neglect over the last 12 months or so. It's just been sat here for almost two years since I dumped it here. But uh, in here, <laughs> it was a workshop for uh, Stevie where he was... Um, doing some panels on his car but this is the culprit here see this thing's actually about a foot too high so i've got to dig that right out to down to around about a foot or so lower and get the bugger out with a chainsaw um, remove all this stuff and then i'll be able to flip this mold over and uh, and get started on it later this year so yeah a little bit of work to do um it's not too bad I've, I, I cleared pretty much most of it about um two years ago um had a bit of a hack at it. Luckily, I killed it about a year ago. It's a bit hard to see it in perspective here, but where we are here, we're inside the deck mould here, which is sitting on the ground. So I wish I'd put a tarp down or something, but, you know, it's just going to have to... A bit more polishing, and I don't mind a bit of that. But um, that root there, as you can see how high it is, it's actually going to affect, uh, and, and in fact, sit where the roof of the, the cabin mould is here. So I've got to dig it out. In fact, it's all dead, so it is breaking up pretty well. So I'm going to get into it and dig this thing right out today. Uh, not fun working and grinding away in here with a uh, with a matic. I'm trying not to damage my mould, but there's a lot of uh, a lot of root to be dug out here. So I'm just going to keep hacking at it. Luckily, it's all dead. Been going at it for about um, probably half an hour, and I've got around the crown of it. All the main feeders are pretty much gone. I'm almost there. I've just got to keep working deeper and deeper. So that's a good sign. So 
got my own private little dog house, cubby house, is where Janet sends me when I'm in trouble. Ah, the joys of boat building, fellas. This is uh, all part of it, unfortunately. Um, sometimes you just need to dig deep and, uh, and and get it done there. With that job out of the way, I was a pretty happy lad. It was time to get back in, inside the hull and, uh, and get on with some what I call real work. But, uh, yeah, getting that flattened was absolutely imperative for a future rollover of the deck mould. So last week, my fuel tanks arrived and uh, I made these braces to fit into the hull of, uh, of the catamaran. And obviously, um, a lot of prep needed before these could actually be put in place. Now, although I got the shape right and I had them all ready to go, there's still hours and hours of prep required. And uh, the fans are still on, guys, so there's a bit of background noise, but uh, here it is. them in, I've got to put a, uh, a layer of um, sea light adhesive or probon light um, in here and radius it and fill it up before I can glass and tab those in. So remembering when I laid up the hull, the entire hull section here was peel dried. Now it's been some months, probably seven or eight months since I've uh, actually uh, glass anything in here, so I'm going to give it a light sand and a clean the styrene just to make sure that it's as clean as it can be. Even though it was peel dried and the peel dry has been removed, uh, there's still going to be contaminants on there, dust, possibly some moisture. Um, like it's 42 degrees in the day, so it's not going to be much moisture in here. But it's so important to keep clean. Now I'll vacuum this uh, whole section out and then I'm going to sand it lightly and then I'm going to wipe it with styrene before I place the bulkhead in place with the fillet. Now the fillet is, is, is a sea light bedding compound, it's an Australian product and it's designed for core materials and it'll provide a perfect uh, fillet. It's everything, all the same stuff I've used putting all this foam down and it sticks like shit to a blanket. So uh, it's going to be a pretty uh, quick process, it's probably only going to take 10 minutes to do each bulkhead. Now it is uh, going to be a 50 odd degree day in, in this tent here, it's supposed to be around 39 a bit later on today. So. Very, very quick cure times. I'm going to catalyze it around 1%. Uh, that's as much as you'd ever want on a day like today. You want it to go up nice and slow. You don't want to bang on that kick. Okay, so this, uh, this is the area for the middle one. And I'll put the end one in first, but you can see here it's been peel plied right up to here anyway. So it's not going to need any surface prep, except for a light swish with a bit of um, 80 grit sandpaper. And that's very coarse. In fact, I think that's even coarser than that. Yeah, 60 grit. Now that's going to create even key the surface even more, but uh, just a very quick cleanup. And I'm going to consider the tabbing as well. I should be wearing a mask. And I'll do that with each of the three positions, and then uh, ready to go. You've got to be religious with the styrene white. It's uh, one of those things you just gotta, you gotta do it. Not the best possible bond I can get. You gotta watch it because it'll through these blocks too. It's some vicious stuff. Look at it clean. Look at the crap that's coming off there. I mean, that's, that's a mess. So, good job. And it doesn't take much to to make a massive difference to the quality of the job and styrene is the key here. Because all of a sudden I've got a tacky surface back again that I haven't had for, you know, six or eight months since I've touched this bit last. All right, so the catalyzer is about 1%. So that's about um, two and a half more than 250. I put it on pretty liberally. 
Now with the sea light, there's very little working time. You've got around six to 10 minutes to get it down. You'll notice that I didn't put any down where the limber holes go either. That's very important that uh, you don't try to put too much material down because I do have to do a, a subsequent clean up around those limber holes to make sure that they are sealed. I also, with the outside edge of the foam bulkhead, um, that was coved so that I ended up with more surface adhesion uh, to the bedding compound. And then I used a spirit level to set these in place. Although I didn't show it, I got a bit messy <laughs> getting these done. So uh, essentially getting that radius and cleaning up now is more important than, uh, uh, than trying to get everything perfect. You're better off to come back later and do a subsequent sand. Now I use wet and dry uh, sandpaper and get a light sand going. And then I ultimately uh, end up with a perfect, perfect fillet, which then can be uh, easily glassed. Now, it's important to note that the fillet is, in fact, the beginning of uh, the tabbing process. And that tabbing actually is what gives the thing ultimate strength. It's not so much the fillet, but the tabbing uh, that gives you the strength. And the fillet, uh, being radius, ensures no air bubbles. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Um, I'm going to come back later when it cools off. I'm going to do my daily friggin' rant about the weather. Here we are again. 39 and a half degrees. I don't know if you can see that. It was at about uh, 37, but it's going up. It's about to hit about 43 in here, I think. I'm out of here. I'm, uh, I've had about eight weeks of this, and uh, I don't think I can do any more right now. I can come back at night. I can come back any time and do this sort of work. Um, the good thing is it's pretty safe. I can just sort of get down in there and plug away and there's a lot of prep work to do so I'm going to go and uh, maybe edit a video. I think that's probably a better use in air conditioning at this stage than uh, trying to do this hoo-ha. Times come after knackering myself about 50 times, that is going to get cut out. I'm going to cut it down about another four or five inches. Now I'm six foot two and a half, and you know reasonably tall, but climbing through that, I'm getting hurt. And uh, that, if it was 25 mil wide, it wouldn't be a problem. You know, it would probably nestle me, but it does, and it almost cuts me in half. That so that's getting cut out, and then I'm going to go in there and I'm going to cut a door out of that as well, so I can get into that crash bulkhead because. Fair dinkum, if I had to climb over that prick of a thing one more time, I'm gonna absolutely lose it. That should do the trick. <laughs> now, this is actually open all the way to the floor here, so the floor is actually joined to the bulkhead there and there, and this bit gets cut out, but I'm gonna leave it there just to make it a little stronger. Or when I laminate it, I'll actually laminate that bit and then I'll get a nice strong edge there. Right, so I'm up in the forward cabin, up in the port cabin. I'm gonna cut a hole in this, similar to that one, undersized of course, but the key is that I can get into the crash bulkhead because my whole thinking is I'm going to glass in the crash bulkhead and all of the wing frames across the front while I've got this bulkhead in place because it gives me, this is only temporary at the moment, it's only sitting here, but it gives me a dead vertical to fill it everything onto the floor, which means that all of my uprights will be right. I can lift this bulkhead out, laminate it, bring it in, whack it straight in. So take this, this bulkhead all the way up, and then laminate it with its two layers on each side, bring it in, and glass it in place. 
a big old stem. The front is, is done already. And the beauty of that is I won't be climbing in and out over the top of this mud because it's four foot high. So climbing over the top is, uh, is going to be a challenge when I'm bringing resins and cleaning and going to the loo and getting cameras and getting all this other stuff. So this is the logistics of building a boat. So I've worked out um, this section here. I can safely cut a hole around about here. So as long as I get vertical. And I know that that down there is the floor level. And I know that that actually is part, it's one of those raised doors. So it's actually got a, uh, a raised pediment to stop water from flowing into the next cabin. Uh, whereas that one does and it basically flows all the way through. Destroying all my good work here. Beautiful. Funny story, my dad was a gun maker. I think I've mentioned it before. Guy was absolutely meticulous with, uh, with steel. You know, the guy could rifle the barrel of a gun six foot long, you know, to perfection. Probably by hand, you know. The guy was absolutely amazing, but wood. <laughs> that was another story. <laughs> All right, so here, hello old friend. Here is the crash bulkhead I installed about four months ago. It's uh, ready to, to basically tab in. So now I've cleared up that, um, I can start to consider how I'm gonna do this. Now I'm gonna tab this one in, but this top guy, it's gonna get uh, glassed in with a couple of angles, um, fiberglass angles underneath, some 90 degree angle on each side. So underneath here, I'll have an angle under here, and then it'll be glued down with uh, plexus spar bond or methacryl or something like that and then I'll be able to simply uh, fill fill it and tab and glass this entire bulkhead in uh, to make it watertight same deal with this here so I will be tabbing this with glass uh, rather than uh, using angle because that's not a dead straight wall that is actually curved but yep that's uh, going to give me good access tomorrow I can come in and have a good clean up in there so our ship is progressing along uh, nicely. I've had a, a bit of a rough couple of days, but that forward crash bulkhead, by the way, is actually a robe up in there, just above that. And I imagine uh, that'll have about seven million pairs of Imelda Boardman shoes. Um, Janet likes the shoes. So it's the next morning I've come in. I've just spent two and a half hours just cleaning, making sure everything's ready to go. I'm gonna fill it. I mean, I'm not gonna tab them today. But I'm going to fill it and in place and uh, yeah, it took more time to clean it. It takes about 10 minutes to fill it at about 10 hours of bloody preparation. But that's what boat building is all about. It's uh, plenty of prep and a minimal amount of work. Right, so this bulkhead's the floor of my forward compartment. Um, you'll notice here what I've done. I don't know whether you can see it, but I've actually coved the foam here, and I want any sharp points here. What I want is a bed of the uh, Pro Bond um, in between the hull and the bulkhead, and a small gap. You don't ever want that sort of pushing hard against the surface because that'll actually create a shear point that could uh, stress and crack the underlying substrate. So it's always good to have a small margin, which is then filled with the adhesive, which allows it to spread the surface area out a little bit and then rely on the tabbing for the strength. All uh, I'm doing here is basically adhering this in place. The tabbing, the, uh, the physical fiberglassing is, is what gives the bulkhead its strength when it's in position, not, uh, not the adhesive so much. So even though the adhesive is certainly working, it's, um, it's a better practice to try to, um, uh, try to, to allow a small margin. So, so that's gonna go straight in in place here. Um, I've already, what I do is I pre-mix up the, uh, the filler, the adhesive, which is the probe on light. It's a, a brilliant stuff to work with. The issue with it is, is that you've got about 10 minutes of working time, so you've really got to get into it, get it cleaned up as quick as possible. The beauty of it is, is it sands quite well. It's like a, it's like a fairing paste that it will sand quite well. So as long as you get in and sand it within the, the couple of hours of your laying it, you've got a good, uh, a good surface to work with. I have to say, it's been one of the more rewarding parts of this build is um, putting these bulkheads in because it actually determines the structure of the boat. 
and, and it, it's something physical you can see, it's sort of like you're stepping up and even though I'd cut them and put them in place, it's nothing like having them physically adhered in place. Um, as I go forward, uh, and uh, I've still got to do the obviously the starboard side, and I'll put a bit of a, a fast motion version of that in the next video. Um, I've been getting a plethora of questions, you know, with regard to what's going on with the boat, what I when I intend to demold. I'm going to put a link to my Q and A video um, just up in the top there. So if you'd uh, like to check out that Q and A video, it answers a lot of the questions up until around now. Um, and if you'd like this video, please give it a like. Please, if you haven't already subscribed, subscribe. And, uh, and I thank you for joining me. And there's still a bit more to come. So enjoy the rest of the vid, guys. And I'll catch you on uh, Life on the Hulls in, uh, in the next episode. Thanks, guys. Bye. Also some hot glue residue down here. You don't want to leave that either because that's not going to let things last. Uh, you've got to, the best thing to get that off is pure alcohol or even methyl spirits will break that down pretty quickly. Right, just come across a bit of a problem. Um, because I put all the bulkheads in, <laughs> and this big freaking timber one here, so you see down here, this is the underfloor, the main compression bulkhead that uh, sort of joins the bridge deck and the hull. Um, I can't get my vacuum up in front to vacuum out all that crud and crap that I've just spent two hours sanding out. Uh, so it's here now, but I had to come across the top of all of these bulkheads to get here. And this is where the boat building is starting to get a little bit complicated. And uh, um, this big fella tripped on the other side of this bulkhead on one of those big wing frames and uh, <laughs> dived. And I didn't get on film and it would have been freaking hilarious because I went head first in that hole into the, uh, the, the said wardrobe, which is only like a foot wide. So, and so my legs were sticking up. The helmet was dead in the hole. And I think I sort of omitted some funny words because uh, the lady across the road, uh, John's wife Sue, who runs the storage units over there, she came running over and uh, she was yelling out to me because I had earplugs and I couldn't hear her. And by the time I extricated myself and did like this beautiful half uh, double pike maneuver to get out, um, she was worried about me. And, and to be honest, I was bloody lucky because the only thing that stopped me falling was my chest. <laughs> if I had it gone any further, I reckon I would have face planted into the bottom of that, a uh, 10 foot drop, and yeah, it could have been a nasty story. It would have damaged my bloody respirator, which I wouldn't have been happy about, but could have possibly done some worse damage to myself. But um, now I've got this bloody vacuum here, my shop back here, I'm gonna give this a clean out, and then I'm gonna have to go through the whole palaver again and get it up over the bulkhead and over the next bulkhead. And uh, I think it's time I move a bit of stuff out of here. I think, you know, I've got a puzzle together, but it uh, might be time to do a little bit of a, um, a bit of a move out now. So I'm gonna call that a pretty productive day. I've um, cleaned out the entire bow crash bulkhead, filled it in. Filled it in my forward bulkhead. And filled it in 
my uh, bulk area at 4400 which is actually the top of the water tank and then fill it in the baffle of the water tank and then the water tank itself so uh, today I've pretty much got all of those guys in sanded prepared and, uh, and uh, I'm ready for glassing so pretty bloody happy and uh, had a nasty fall up in there so yep